Hi, it's Norman Koshnick here for Eyes on Cricket with Norman Koshnick. I'm here this afternoon in Sydney. It's about up to 41 degrees Celsius today. It's been extremely hot. And due to that fact, I've decided to stay indoors and not head down to a cafe to enjoy my normal coffee and read some papers. So I've, I've actually bought the papers and brought them back and I've got quite a few here. I've got the, um, the likes of the Daily Telegraph, which talks about some interesting aspects. The whole racist commentary issue has not gone away. It, it may well have moved away from some of the Indian players that we were talking about earlier, such as Mohammed Siraj and the like. It's moved a bit more to a localised feel where Dan Christian, who is one of the Big Bash players for the BBL, um, has come out about his Indigenous side of things and he's been he's been targeted by racist trolls through his social media and other networks, specifically on his Indigenous st stature. So that's quite disturbing that it's actually moved somewhat from the Indian situation in Sydney and the like back to our home location. Again, racism doesn't necessarily... It's never good nor bad, whether it's to an Indian or to an Indigenous Australian, it's the same. It's equally as bad all around. And Dan Christian's quite strong about it. And he's, as he puts it, has hit the racist trolls for six, which is an impressive point. Another point that Ben Horn's actually brought out in the same paper, Ben Horn, a sports journalist of some great note, he's talked about the racial abuse case is actually open. So the investigators are convinced India was subjected to racial taunts throughout the SCG test but are still hoping New South Wales Police can shed more light on identifying the culprit. So that's that case has been opened up more so officially, you would argue, post the series, which is a great thing, so we aren't leaving it alone. So there's one end of the scale is the Indian case, which is opened, and they're both the likes of the investigators and the SCG Trust, along with the police and the security involved, are all putting their act together to, to actually open the case and get to the bottom of what actually what really happened and try to get a hold of the, the so-called culprits, which is great. But it is sad that we've got another chapter opening up with Dan Christian and the BBL. That's not what I was hoping to expect. Another another point that came out in yesterday's paper, which um, it's been some 40 years since Trevor Chappell, in fact, was involved with the underarm incident, the underarm, underarm gate, if you want to call it that, where he bowled the delivery against New Zealand with his, with his brother Greg, captaining the side and ordering to do it. That saga seems to raise its ugly head every year since that, of course. And after 40 years, Again, another newspaper article about it, but more so to try and say this is the last time we'll talk about it. So let's hope that is the case because whether it's good or bad, it's 40 years, it's best left forgotten and left in that position, even though it was a pretty ordinary error. i never forget Richie Benno was quite disgusted on air when that, that, that moment happened. He, he tore to shreds the whole saga and was particularly damning on, on the chapels for that incident. But yet that's something in the past now, some 40 plus years away. So that's another aspect which is of interest from the papers. There's also the um, appointment of a guy called Tom Greenberg, who's more of a rugby league administrator. He's actually now been given the job at the head of the Australian Cricketers Association. Um, and Shane, it looks like Shane Watson's got a role there as well. So there's some aspects of importance there that an administrator who's had a pretty good reputation within the rugby, rugby league circles is now moving into the cricket circles. So there's some of the aspects of the papers that are here today. Um, there was a lot of discussion from our learned friend Gideon Haig and that was in the the Australian and he brought to our attention again aspects to do with um, he claimed that the PM our Prime Minister is out of touch and that's what Dan Christian actually said and Gideon quoted them on that and I'll just show you that article it's, it's some significance you'll see it you'll see it in the lead up that's what's the headed there and Gideon is coined as saying if you believe as I do that cricket is the finest game ever devised, which oh, I certainly agree, you should want everyone to enjoy the opportunity to share in it. Hence, even the indigenous of Dan, Dan Christian. So I'll repeat that. If, if Gideon Hayes said, if you believe as I do that cricket is the finest game ever devised, you should want everyone to enjoy the opportunity to share in it. So that certainly is the case. It's certainly a, an impressive um, way of coining that phrase. So it's um, it's something of a of a point that hasn't gone away. The whole aspect of of the whole incident regarding the racism. There's also an article here about your man Ashwin in India reveals that India's boycott threat was actually imminent, and that that it's even more of an extra motivation as to how 
they had an incredible triumph in, in the series. So Ashwin opened up. Peter Lawler has actually written about that particular point that Arvish under Ashwin, Ashwin has actually revealed that the Indian boycotts were certainly a threat and were close, but they didn't actually go through. The other part of um, the ever-loving Gideon Haig and his articles, cricket's failure to keep pace with changing face of Australia. So there's a claim here that the sport does not always look hospitable compared to others. So that's a claim that he and Peter